Hi guys, I have a cool project to show you today and I want to show you a cool way of making it, maybe a little out of the normal for a normal job shop to approach a job like this. But I just thought uh, you guys might find it interesting and maybe learn something along the way or see something we're doing differently and maybe teach us something as well. So here's our part here. It's a three quarter inch hex and it's like seven and a half inch long. And we have a tapped hole and a through hole on one side and the same exact thing on the other side. It's symmetrical about the middle here. So when you get a job like this, you kind of got to decide, all right, you know, does, how, do, how do I order the stock, first of all? Well, luckily, this is a nominal hex size, so you can order three-quarter inch hex. And you can get it in a, this is cold rolled steel, so it comes pretty much, this is already finished size. Um, and you order it in like a 12 foot bar. So obviously you got to cut it roughly to your length. Then you got to figure out, okay, do I want to, how do I want to do this? Do I want to go in a lathe and, you know, turn one face one side here and drill and tap. And maybe my lathe has a Y axis and I can, you know, cross drill this with a live tool. Um, and then of course I'm going to have to flip it around and reference that back side, like in the collet, like have a stop and do the same thing here. Now, that might be fine, but um, you have a lot of manual labor there. Unless you had a robot or something, that's a lot. If you have a large quantity, um, like 200 of these or 300 or 400, it's just going to be a lot of labor because it's such a fast cycle time to do this and then flip it around. You're basically going to have to stand at the machine the whole time. So I want to show you a way that we devised to do more than one part at once. And the way to do this is to take advantage of a five axis machine. So you can see here this fixture in blue here. Um, trying to make this blue go close enough. Uh, <clears throat> that will bolt to the table of a five axis machine. And now we can put all the parts in and we can mill them all in one shot and do all the holes and index and tap and drill and index, tap and drill. So that will save a lot of time. I mean, it's a little more time to load, but, you know, there's a lot less, you know, taking out and putting it back in and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to be making these parts four at a time on a Herco VM10U, which is a five axis machine. So, first we had to design a, a way of holding them, and we came up with these fixture, this fixture, which it kind of nestles them in here. This is 60 degrees um, between these two lands. It's 60 degrees between this line and this line. If we hide this, maybe you could see it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and it's really going to clamp down hard on the top of the parts. And that should hold them in. So let's go over here. Alright, so we got to make the fixture. And the first step was to select some stock. And we're programming this all in solid cam, which is really cool because any changes, I always changing everything as I'm going, you know, maybe I couldn't find the right piece of stock or I wanted, you know, the, the parts to sit in deeper. I can, I have my feature tree here and I can just, after I do a change to the model, I just come right over here. I right click on it, hit synchronize. It updates everything and it updates all my tool paths. So that's, that's extremely powerful. SolidCam really has a good interface with SolidWorks. Um, and I'm, I've am i been using SolidWorks for a long time, so I, it's very nice for us. Um, so yeah, so here is just all the programming to make this fixture. And we did some eye machining here, some eye roughing. Not really, went real quick to just blast this out with a small tool. And... 
I would have done all this probably on the machine conver uh, conversationally, but it's just so I didn't have to like figure out the transform planes and stuff. I instead of using like a chamfer mill here or something, we made this you know with just a normal end mill. Here, I'll, let me just run the whole thing so you could see it. Oh, I think I just ran that one block. Well, that's the eye machining block. Let's run these. Well, well, not much too fast. So that way you could use a normal end mill, and this is, you know, 60 degrees. You'd have to have a 60 degree chamfer mill, um, and that could have been done in like the three axis, but this was pretty cool. So anyway, so once that was done, then we went over into our other program. Let me pull that up. <clears throat> and in this program, we uh, are able to do everything in one shot here. We come in, we spot the cross holes, then we drill the cross holes, and then we, here, maybe it's better I just do the whole thing. So we come in spot them, drill them through. Oh, that's going so fast. All right. Anyway, that's our chamfer mill. It's our drill. It's our tap. Okay, and then here, to do this chamfer, since we didn't have a lathe and it's 15 degrees, we actually had to profile that. Just kind of an edge break, like if you ever see a bolt head, they have that in that scribe circle. But um, yeah, so pretty cool. All right, let's go over on the machine and cut it. All right, now our parts are loaded on our fixture. But we have to orientate them because we, we cut them pretty close to size. We didn't want to leave a lot of stock to be cut off with our end mill in the machine. So we had to come up with an idea to, to bump the stock up. So my brother Colton thought of something that reminded me of the trick that Titan showed everyone uh, earlier last year. Uh, but here we're using a broken end mill flipped upside down. All those high feed end mills we broke in the previous video. Now we got another use for them. But we're going to be using it to push the stock, and you got to be careful that, you know, the, the tool, the stuff can move in a clear path. And we calculated in the G-code, you know, exactly where it needs to be.